Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM where you go over, uh, well, songs that came out in the last three weeks of EDM, actually, because I am a little behind uh, for good reason, because I got a puppy. I got a nice little puppy, and uh, he's the cutest thing in the world. He's just uh, eight weeks old right now, and so I've been very busy with him, and so that's why I have not been up to date with This Week in EDM, so hopefully these cute pictures are uh, a good enough apology. But uh, let's hop into it. We've got three weeks of EDM and uh, 52 songs I believe that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to speed run through these as much as I can uh, and see how far and uh, we get, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no trash. No trash songs this at all. No trash songs, I would say, in the last three weeks. Uh, but we do have a couple in bad, and just remember, these are my opinions. Uh, we've got Must Die Better Off. The Vampire Weapon Crimson EP is out now, and I thought the mixing was quite flat and just never really appreciated the kind of hard style uh, abrasiveness from uh, Must Die. We got Vice Stone and Anna Clen. Oh gosh, Clendening uh, with "See You Again." Uh, more of this kind of basic as hell Vice Stone track. It's just so dry and lifeless, and I'm not a fan. And I've got Murata with uh, Prex. I want to say uh, new EP out now from Murata, and uh, this track in particular, I was just really not on board with. I thought it was way too screechy and short, uh, and the song just kind of feels like it gives up on the off drop sections and just does nothing but just a pad. And so this was a big no for me, dog. And I've got Yatep, uh, Affinity, and Micah Martin with Never Go Back. I did not love the vocals here from Micah Martin, sadly, and thought the production was pretty cookie-cutter melodic, and so all that just means it's uh, not a very good track, in my opinion, so... And I've got Cod Dubs and Squishy with Vitamin R, uh, some straight up rhythm on Monster Cat with this one here, and I did not feel like it resonated with me at all. I thought the mixing was dry, and the kind of odd liquid synth just kind of felt really out of place here. Uh, this track just did not land for me in any way, but... Uh, then we've got Sippy and Milky with Silky. Uh, another, yeah, this is just a weird week for Monster Cat Uncaged for me personally. Um, this was just another track I just really wasn't vibing with. I thought it was too short and not really much happening in terms of uh, sound variety and, um, I guess, musical elements. I just, I don't know, just wasn't a fan. Uh, then we're headed into the meh category, songs that uh, I thought were meh, and just know that these are out of order from the last uh, bunch of weeks. They're kind of just all over the place. But uh, we've got Bishu with So Absurd. Uh, first track from an upcoming Bishu album, supposedly, and uh, this track in particular is very relaxed uh, and uh, obviously unserious by this album art. And uh, overall, I didn't think too much about it, really, and so I just thought it was meh. Then we got Masochist and Inhuman with Anima. Uh, we've got Destructive Dubs up here that uh, really often isn't for me. It's not my kind of style that I enjoy, but, um, you know, I didn't think it was too bad. It's kind of more on the spookier side of dubstep, which is good for uh, upcoming spooky season. But, um, yeah, I thought it was not bad. Then we got Darren Styles and Tone Shifters with Wasted. Uh, really did not like the first drop. I found the second to be kind of more of a, like a standard hardcore style here, especially from Darren Styles. And uh, yeah, I just I didn't think it was too bad in the end. If it was just, if it was multiple of the first drops, I would have not liked this at all. But um, yeah, not not too bad. Then we got Cage with Commotion. The new NCS EP is out now of Dust and Shadows. Uh, and I still feel like Cage maybe peaked with a Grave EP personally. I think that's, yeah, what I would say. And everything since then has felt fairly standard. I don't know if it's because my first listen with him was uh, was my favorite stuff of his. And so then everything else I'm comparing to. But I don't know. I, I think it's a solid track, but uh, nothing too crazy or out of this world. We've got Starseed, uh, Isaac, and Micah Martin again with uh, When You Were Mine. I really like the production elements and sounds of this track, but I felt like the mixing did not do it any justice. Um, thought it was pretty flat and dulled out the energy quite a bit of this track. So uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the sounds, but did not like the mixing. And then we've got Tom Ferry, Will Mack, and Nina Carr with the one you call. Uh, this feels like just kind of standard instinct track nowadays from Monster Cat, and it's a simple slap house beat, nothing right home about. It's, it's okay. Then we've got Martin Garrix and uh, Loy, Loy Iso, I want to say, with Real Love. Uh, commercial Slap House is here, and uh, with some more energy behind it, I will say. Uh, I think this thing will likely stream well. I did enjoy the vocals here, and uh, I would be happy to hear this on the charts for sure. I think this is not bad for Martin Garrix. We've got Skylar with Overdrive. Uh, at times it felt like Speed House, this uh, trap track, does kind of have a uh, fun flair and style to it, but one that didn't really land so much in my wheelhouse. Uh, so I did enjoy parts and elements of it, but uh, overall as a track, I thought it was just meh. Then we've got Bob Moses, Round and Round, a standard Bob Moses track here, personally. It uh, just has some nice, light touches of synth melodies that you don't often hear a ton from Bob Moses tracks. It's often a lot more deeper and more brooding, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's not bad. 
Then we've got Elenium, the uh, Trivecta Starfall remix. Uh, glad to see Trivecta tackle uh, what I believe to be the best song from the Elenium album. Uh, but that being said, though, I thought the original was actually a lot stronger in both production and mixing. I just thought uh, the original... Uh, yeah, I just thought it was a better song. I, I thought Trevecta's take on it was um, was okay, but uh, again, not really for me. Then we've got Odd Kid Out and Kelly Page with Not The One. A uh, very sonically strange track, I would say. It ebbs and flows through a bunch of different sounds and genres, and was a little all over the place for such a short song, uh, in my opinion, and uh, one that I think might actually grow on me over time, but for now, I'm uh, I'm, I'm okay on then we're moving into the good category. We've got, I believe, 35 songs in good this week. So there's a ton of good stuff these last three weeks. Uh, so let's speed through them if we can. Uh, St. Punk Hooligans, a standard bass house from St. Punk here. But uh, that will always be good in my books. I'm a fan of St. Punk and bass house. Then we've got Bows and Milk with Tokyo Drift, a modern funk version of Tokyo Drift, which the original was also pretty much funk. But uh, I mean, this is pretty solid. It's a fun uh, throwback with slight changes that uh, I thought were an upgrade to the original track. I've got Kid featuring Nev with On My Own, a, sl a solid melodic cut from Kid here with uh, great backing vocals from Nev. Uh, on the more commercial side, I would say from Kid and his production, but uh, I did enjoy this one. Then I've got Nostalgics featuring Rico Nasty with War. Uh, this song has actually grown on me quite a bit in the last couple weeks that I have heard this, um, and I'm starting to appreciate it a lot more. I didn't kind of love the vocals on first glance, but uh, after some time, I've really warmed up to the track, and I uh, enjoy it quite a bit now. So this one has a bit of a hindsight bias, I guess, sort of three-week hindsight bias, if you want to say that counts, but... Uh, then we've got Chime and the Wind Elementals with Hyperbeam. Uh, I said it with the last Wind Elementals track uh, that I thought it does... Yeah, I thought the whole team just did a fantastic job of keeping the track feeling not so bloated. Uh, considering there's, what, 16 different producers on this? It's, what, Chime and 13, 14, 15 others? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was a great track and it didn't sound like a hu huge mega collab, which I think is a plus. And I loved the kind of all-out finale. And also just a note here, uh, they, these are not really in order. These aren't ranked like these good from bottom to top. It's just, they're all in good and there's different ones. Like I think I actually like the chime track better than um, the one we're about to talk to talk about. So this is just all general category of good. But. And then we've got Roman Silver with La Sapetic with I Don't Want to Be Here. The Dragonfly LP, the debut LP from Roman Silver is out now. And uh, this track in particular is light and airy and is a good change of pace for the album uh, in its runtime. So yeah, go give the LP a listen if you haven't already. I think it's pretty solid. We got Rebel Scum with Do Not Resist, a very upbeat, destructive D&B track with mounds of energy. And uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. They've got Inhuman and Hellsythe with E Arrival. I don't know why I said E at the end there, but uh, yeah, the new Arrival LP from Inhuman is out now, and this is a six minute long journey of a track, and um, I'm surprised how much I enjoyed this. It's got that kind of classic dark brooding atmosphere you get from Inhuman, uh, but kind of mixed in all these like bass sounds, I just was really on board with this one in particular, so uh, I'm excited to get to that LP in full, which I have not yet. We've got Knock 2 and Dylan Francis with Buttons. Uh, Knock 2 is really hitting it big with these kind of big collabs, but uh, I don't think, yeah, I think the kind of other collaborators are bringing the tracks down just a tad. Um, I love the off-drop sections, but the kind of simple melodies on the drops I felt were a little bit lacking, a little bit uh, dull, but uh, I do think this is a solid track in the end overall. Uh, and then we've got Duskus I Can See, uh, a light and bright track with a constant kind of floor on the floor beat. Uh, that is a beautiful playlist ad, I think for sure. So that's Duskus. And then we've got Blank, the Control VIP. The long way to Control VIP is out, and I do think it's solid. Um, obviously, on the more bro step side of Blank's discography here, uh, but he play, plays around with a very unique trap kind of second drop. It, not quite like a liquid trap, kind of just, um, yeah, fun sound that I thought worked really well, especially in the back end, so. Then we've got Bad Computer with Ultraviolet. Bad Computer is on Chompo for the Chompo Season 1 DLC. It came out a bunch of weeks ago. But uh, yeah, this kind of reminds me more of the early days of Bad Computer with a little bit more of a niche sound rather than a more commercial one that he's been doing as of recent. And uh, just another solid addition to his discography up to this point. So I'm going to go Bad Computer. Speaking of solid discographies, we've got No Mana featuring Voicitions with Justify. Um, I've always said that wrong, the name Voicitions, Voicitions. I don't know why I can't say that, that name, but uh, No Mana is just such a pleasure to listen to. And uh, his kind of progressive electro house is, uh, will never not hit for me, I think, personally. Uh, that being said, this is my least favorite of his four Monster Cat releases up to this point, but uh, still a solid track. Go check it out. 
And I've got Sam Gallatry with Under the Illusion. The Under the Illusion EP is also out now, a four track kind of clubhouse EP here. And um, yeah, I've been a fan of Sam's for a while and I think his kind of uh, lounge club mixture and fusion of stuff is something that I really resonated with. So I like that a lot. Then we got Apache and Ysoe, YCO, uh, with Human. Um, yeah, his vocals here uh, remind me a lot of Kid Cudi in some of those sections, especially the kind of, uh, the I guess, chorus sections, you would say. And uh, Apache's production is kind of his classic orchestral dubstep that you kind of get. And uh, I'm excited for the upcoming Apache album. Uh, I'm, yeah, very excited for that, actually. Then we've got No Taker uh, with Echoes in Eternity. The Echoes in Eternity debut album from No Taker is here as well. And uh, yeah, this is kind of his bread and butter space, Electro House, and it is solid. Um, just another, just, yeah, just great track. I think it blends in with the rest of the singles really well. So uh, that's something that now I haven't explored yet quite, but I need to do that as well. I've got Glacier uh, Views, The Wind Between the Light, continuing his kind of views set of tracks. Glacier is taking on yet another more kind of down-to-earth, relaxed track, and I would go give this one a listen for sure. And we've got Slippy, Black Sheep, uh, and Focus featuring Bianca with Ricochet. A huge four-way collab here with a stylistically unique track. Um, it's bass house, but kind of without the big sounding drops that you normally get from a bass house with a really pounding boom, boom, boom. Um, and yeah, instead of a little bit more reserved pulled back drop, which I thought actually worked really well than a kind of standard more uh, by the book space house uh, drop. So where'd he go? We've got Night Punk and Habstrack, the, or with Point, the uh, Nevadas and Wink remix. Uh, lovely remix of an already killer track, uh, kept the energy from the original and really got creative with the drops, and I thought it worked really, really well. I've got Noir and Beast Boy with Nero Mad, uh, some melodic rhythm that I actually got behind. Uh, it's flashy and destructive while still sounding pleasing, and as someone that has never been a huge fan of rhythm, go listen to this. I think this is solid. And uh, then we've got ISXO and Fuzzy with Star Sound, a uh, brilliantly modern kind of club bass house track here that feels right at home in line with the kind of modern sounds of today and kind of the, the regular style that kind of Skrillex has also brought more into the limelight, um, that knock to similar. Uh, I think this is just a brilliant uh, thing, brilliant, brilliant track. And I think there's an album coming from uh, ISOXO soon. I, th I think I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah. We'll move on to Nitro Fun and Brit Laurie with Fight or Show Me Who You Are. Uh, Big Room House from Nitro and Brit was uh, not on my 2023 bingo card, but I am all for it. I actually really enjoyed the track for its kind of wall of sound atmosphere that is kind of just all so prominent throughout the track, and uh, I did enjoy it. Then we've got Tosoki and Oliver's with Dream About You, a jumpy DNB track with lots of flair to it, and I think it's a solid collaboration between these two producers. We've got Former Hero, One Last Flicker, Then We're Gone. Sad, sad, sad for me. Uh, tragically, the end of Former Hero. This is the uh, second last song from his final album. Uh, and so that is out now. I would go listen to it. Um, but uh, yeah, emotionally powerful record with lots of kind of um, self-identity and just exploring, yeah, lots of things about the self uh, narratives. But uh, go listen to this for sure. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty beautiful record, I would say. So... I don't want to spoil too much. I want to give a review at some point uh, later on in the future. So and then we've got Fool and Wave Shaper with Encounter, a dynamic synthwave track that uh, will end up being on an upcoming Fool album, which uh, is very exciting for me. I do love Fool's sound design, uh, but recognize that it's kind of been a similar sound for a couple of years now. And so I'm hoping this album will spice things up a little bit for me, but that's uh, still a solid track. We got Midas featuring Sarah DeWarren with Phantom Love. I really like Sarah's vocals on this track, particularly how Midas kind of pulls back the production for extended segments and kind of lets Sarah just go for it. Uh, it's a fresh down, it's a fresh sound and style from Midas, uh, and it's currently my favorite song of his uh, this year. So, way to go! We've got Pilot and Tyler Lyle with Time Bomb, a crazy collab for all of the synthwave lovers out there, um, with Tyler Lyle being uh, the vocals from The Midnight. Um, yeah, this is just a, a synth lover's dream, and I personally have never actually liked Tyler's vocals for me personally, but I do particularly love the funky production uh, on the track from Pilot here, so uh, solid one. Then we've got the... I don't know what I said, The Alive by Casbo, uh, the second single from an upcoming Casbo album project. Not really sure what it is at this point, but another atmosphere track that leans slightly into the more progressive house genre style of things. Uh, a little bit more uh, laid back than Casbo has uh, been historically. 
I've got Manila Killa and Liney with Sacredly, a throwback to an older progressive Electro House hybrid track that reminds me a lot of Dead Mouse, actually. And uh, I'm really all for this track, and I think Manila Killa killed it on this one. Then we've got Kirby and Eleganto featuring Jeanette Live with Like That. Uh, this is just prime time Kirby on this track. I think this was, um, this has the legs actually to go the distance in terms of streaming numbers wise. And uh, it's simple and effective and grooving. And I hope to see this song have some good success. Then we've got Slushy and Spirit Link with I Tried It. Uh, very underscores inspired hyper pop track here. Underscores being a uh, artist who does hyper pop stuff. And uh, honestly, I think this is Slushy's best in the last couple of years. Personally, I really like the energetic hyper pop style and I think it suits his production quite a bit too. I hadn't really listened to Spirit Link beforehand, but in terms of Slushy, I think this works really well and I would love to see Slushy take this direction with his um, uh, alias. So. Then we've got Cosmos Midnight uh, featuring Shugunzo with Give Me Some More. This is just, yeah, Cosmos Midnight, just, they don't, they don't really miss. They're kind of funky, soulful production is always fresh and energetic. And uh, yeah, the bright synths and woodwind instrumentation are really exciting on this track as well. So, it's all there. And then we've got Night Punk with Hyperdust Reimagined. The Human Deluxe LP is out now. My favorite album so far from 2023 is Night Punk's Deluxe, or Human, and this is the deluxe version of that now. So go listen to it. I think it's great. Uh, yeah, I uh, took the original and um, made it this like kind of underground hardstyle track uh, that isn't quite hardstyle, but is and isn't. But uh, yeah, it's kind of got that constant, relentless beat uh, with an omnipresent atmosphere, and I think it uh, worked quite well. Then we've got Grizz in this world. The Araboso, I think I said that right, EP is out now, and this track in particular is just straight up Grizz at his best. Wonky drops, nostalgic vocal samples, saxophone solo, it's all here and on full display. And the final track of the last three weeks is a standout track, a song that I thought was really, really good. It is Space Laces, uh, the Eprom remix of Dominate. I really love this remix. It is short and sweet, but man, does Eprom come in swinging with huge IDM wubs on this. And whoo, this, uh, this is one of the ones that I really, really wish it was longer just because I loved it so much and want to hear so much more from it. This is probably the shortest track I've ever given standout, I think, in my uh, whole time doing Bowtie at this point. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of any and all of these tracks in the comment section below. I'm sorry for the delay. Again, puppy, hopefully you don't be gay mad at me because of puppy. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.